Welcome back to the lecture introduction to law. In this unit, you will hear something about the law of the European Union. The European Union, or short EU, is an association of 27 European countries. It is not to be confused with the continent Europe. The European Union is based on the rule of law. This means that all EU activity is based on treaties adopted by all Union member states on a voluntary and democratic basis. The European Union has no constitutional power. This remains with the member states. For this reason, the member states are also referred to as the master of the treaties. Since the European Union has no constitutional power, it lacks comprehensive sovereignty. Therefore, the principle of conferral applies. As an outgrowth of this principle, the European Union may only act on the basis of the principle of subsidiary if uniform regulation is necessary and if the planned objectives can be better achieved jointly. European law does not affect the validity of the German hierarchy of norms, because this source of law enjoys primacy of application, not primacy of validity. Although European law in principle enjoys primacy of application over national law, it does not take precedence over the German constitution. There is no relationship of superiority or subordination between the constitutional order of the Federal Republic of Germany and the European Community legal order. The compatibility in principle of European law with the German constitution is set out in Article 23, Basic Law, German Grundgesetz. All public authorities, including regional authorities and all national courts, must observe the primacy of application. They are not authorized to review acts of the Union institutions for their compatibility with the fundamental rights of the national constitutions. This is because if national legislation follows mandatory Union law, it can only be reviewed in accordance with the fundamental rights guaranteed under Union law. The member states are obliged to refrain from introducing regulations that are contrary to Union law. The primacy of application also applies to final administrative acts of the member states, since otherwise, in the opinion of the European Court of Justice, the individual would be deprived from the legal protection afforded by directly applicable union law. The member states have assumed the mutual obligation in the founding treaties to refrain from any measures that might conflict with the achievement of the Union's objectives. The functioning of the Union presupposes the uniform application of the law. In so far as there is no conflict between national law and Union law, national law must be observed by the national authorities and the courts of the respective member state. On the other hand, those standards of Union law which are directly applicable enjoy priority of application over the national law of the member states. However, the question of whether a union law standard is directly applicable, applicable is only relevant if it provides for a legal consequence for the same facts that contradicts of national law. A directly applicable provision gives the individual his or her own subjective right vis-a-vis -vis a member state and has the same effect as national law. Directly applicable union law takes precedence over the national law of the member states if the other requirements of the primacy of applications are met. In principle, European law is divided into primary law and secondary law, sometimes tertiary law is also designated as a level of regulation. Let's talk about primary law first and then about secondary law. Primary law is the central legal source of the European law. The treaties are the basis for European Union actions. As primary law, 
the European treaties constitute a type of European constitutional law. A treaty is a binding agreement between the EU member states. It sets out the objectives of the European Union, the rules applicable for its institutions, the process of decision making and the relations between the European Union and its member states. The founding treaties of the European communities have since been amended several times, most recently by the Lisbon Treaty in 2009. Under the treaties, the European Union institutions can adopt legislations that the member states subsequently implement. Primary law also regulates which institutions participate in decisions and how. The most important primary law treaties today are the Treaty on European Union, TEU, and the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, TFEU. Secondary law, in contrast to primary law, is law enacted by the institutions of the European Union in accordance with the treaties which is subject to legal principle of Article 5 TEU. These principles include the principle of conferral, the subsidiary principle, and the principle of proportionality. There are different forms of secondary law. See Article 288 TFEU. To exercise the Union's competences, the institutions shall adopt the regulations, directives, decisions, recommendations, and opinions. Regulations. A regulation is a binding legal act that all EU countries must fully imply. A regulation has general application according to Article 288 TFEU. This means that a regulation regulates an indefinite variety of matters in a general abstract manner. Moreover, such a regulation is binding in its entirety and directly applicable in every member state. An act of transportation by the member state is therefore not required. In practice, this means that persons of the EU member states who are affected by the EU regulation may directly invoke the regulation before their respective national courts. If a member state violates EU regulations, the European Commission may bring an action before the European Court of Justice in form of infringement proceeding pursuant to Article 258 TFEU. However, according to Article 259 TFEU, the other member states also have the possibility to obtain the opening of such proceedings. Directives. A directive is a legal act that sets an objective to be achieved by all EU countries. Thus, a directive is binding only as to the result to be achieved. It is up to the individual member states to enact their own legislation to achieve this objective. Therefore, an act of transposition by member states is required. An implementation obligation arises from Article 288.3 TFEU in conjunction with Article 4.3 TEU. When transposing practical effectiveness, the so-called effet utile principle must always be ensured. It is important here that the transportation into the, the transposition into the respective national law must be carried out in such a way that any rights that may arise as a result are clearly recognizable for the individual and one can thus assort, assert them. In contrast to EU regulations, directives do not take effect immediately, but only after they have been transposed into national law. This means that only then do their contents become binding for the citizens and give rise to a direct claim. Exceptions exist, however, in those cases 
in which an AU, EU directive has not been implemented properly or in due time. If this is the case, it can be applied by public authorities and thus have direct effect, so-called direct third party effect. However, the relevant directive must be sufficiently defined. Furthermore, the directive must not impose any direct obligations on individuals in such cases. Decisions. Decisions are binding and directly applicable to those to whom they are addressed. For example, an EU country or an individual company. According to Article 288 for TFEU, a decision is binding in its entirety only on its addressees. And thus has individual, it thus has individual application and is usually made by executive action, primarily by the European Commission. Recommendations. Recommendations are not binding. However, they must be taken into account by national courts when interpreting national law. A recommendation thereby suggests a certain conduct to the addressee. Statements. In a statement, institutions may express their views on the matter in a non-binding manner. A statement is thus a mere expression of opinion. It therefore does not constitute a legal obligation for the addressees and is not binding. Opinion may be issued by the main EU institutions, the Commission, Council or Parliament, as well as the Committee of the Regions and the European Economic and Social Committee. In the course of drafting legislations, the committees submit opinions against the background of their respective regional, economic or social standpoint. However, they must be taken into account by national courts when interpreting national law. Let's talk about the institutions of the European Union next. In the European Union, the member states have delegated some of their sovereignty rights to independent institutions representing community, national and citizens' interests. According to the Treaty on European Union, Article 13 TEU, there are seven institutions in total. The European Parliament, the European Council, the Council of the European Union, also called Council of Ministers, the European Commission, the European Court of Justice, the European Central Bank and the European Court of Auditors. The European Parliament. Citizens directly elect their representatives for a term of five years by universal, free and secret suffrage. The European Parliament, which has its seat in Strasbourg, uh, other places of work are Brussels and Luxembourg. The European Parliament is regulated as part of the institutions of the EU in Article 14 TEU. Details are standardized in the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, namely in Articles 223 following TFEU. The Parliament, together with the Council of Ministers, adopts laws that are valid in all member states of the European Union and that affect our daily lives. Furthermore, the European Parliament controls the Commission and is composed of elected representatives of citizens of the Union from the various member states. The European Council. The European Council is composed of the heads of state and government of each member state, as well as the president of the European Council, the president of the European Commission. The high representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy participates in its work. The meetings of the European Council are often referred to as EU summits. The European Council has its headquarters in Brussels. It is standardized as part of the institutions of the EU in Article 15 TEU. 
The details are regulated by Articles 235 following TFEU. The European Council formulates the general political objectives and priorities for the progress of the EU and is therefore regarded as the pacemaker for the further development of the European Union. Final agreement on treaty changes, for example, on the draft constitution, is a matter for the European Council. In addition, the European Council has an important role in foreign policy. It formulates the general guidelines of European foreign security and defense policy. But the European Council has no legis legislative powers. The European Council should not be confused with the Council of Europe, which is the European Commission on Human Rights, and is also not to be confused with the Council of the European Union, also called Council of Ministers. The Council of the European Union. The governments of the member states are represented in the Council of the European Union. It is called the Council of Ministers because ministers from the 27 member states meet in Brussels or Luxembourg. The Council has its headquarters in Brussels and a place of work in Luxembourg. The Council is standardized as part of the organs of the EU in Article 16 TEU. More detailed provisions are contained in Articles 237 following TFEU. Together with the European Parliament, the Council of the European Union, also called Council of Ministers, it is the legislative body of the European Union. It plays a central role in the common foreign and security policy and in the coordination of economic policy. The European Commission. The European Commission represents and defends the interests of the whole of Europe. It prepares proposals for new legislations, is responsible for the application of the treaties. That's why it's got guardian of the treaties. It carries out the coordinating executive and administrative functions in accordance with the treaties. It also supervises in particular the management of the EU budget. The Commission has its seat in Brussels. The Commission is governed by Article 17 TEU and Articles 244 following TFEU. It is also referred to as the guardian of the treaties and monitors that the member states comply with the provisions of the European law. According to Article 258 TFEU, it can also do this by appealing to the European Court of Justice. Furthermore, as part of the European Union institutions, the Commission has a monopoly on legislative initiative. With regard to its composition, the principle of equal rotation applies. The Commission is composed of nationals of the member states who may become commissioners by way of equal rotation. The Commission is composed of 27 members, each of whom is a national of a member state. The Commissioners are bound to safeguard the interests of the European Union. The European Court of Justice. The Court of Justice has its seat in Luxembourg. The Court of Justice and its procedures are governed by Article 19 TEU and Articles 251 following TFEU. It is the judicial body of the European Union and comprises the General Court, the court which has first instance jurisdiction in certain proceedings, and isolated specialized courts which have first instance jurisdiction in some proceedings. The purpose of these courts is to ensure the uniform interpretation of the law. It cannot be that in disputes about European law, the individual courts of the member state decide conclusively for their member state, because then there would be no uniform European law. The Court of Justice therefore decides on actions brought by member states, institutions, natural persons or legal persons, such as companies. 
Court of Justice is composed of one judge per member state and assisted by the advocates general. The European Central Bank, ECB, it is based in Frankfurt am Main and is responsible for European monetary policy. With the Treaty of Lisbon, it has become an institution of the European Union. Its main objective is to remain, maintain price stability in Europe. In order to be able to fulfill its tasks imposed under the treaties in accordance with Article 127 TFEU, it is completely independent and may not be influenced by politics. Therefore, the central bank has its own budget, which is fed by the national central banks. The ECB, the national central bank and the members of their decision-making bodies may not take instructions from the governments of the member states. The member states undertake to observe this principle in the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, TFEU. Last one is the European Court of Auditor, Auditors. The Court of Auditors examines whether all the revenue and expenditure of the community and of its institutions it has created is lawful. It also checks that revenue and expenditure are in conformity with the payment appropriations based on the treaties and are executed correctly. The Court of Audit also ensures that the budget is managed economically and efficiently. Next topic, the European single market. The European single market is the single market coming to the member states of the European Union. In addition to the member states, the European single market includes the states of Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein, which together with the EU form the European Economic Area and Switzerland. The international market of the EU transfers the principle known from a nation state to the entire European Union. Therefore, so-called four freedoms must be realized in the European internal market. Freedom of movement of persons, freedom of movement of gods, freedom of movement of services and freedom of movement of capital. All freedoms aim at eliminating and preventing barriers to trade. The freedom of movement of persons. In the member states, the free movement of persons is guaranteed under Article 21 TFEU. Um, it allows citizens of member states to move and reside freely in other member states. Thus, the freedom of movement of persons only concerns natural persons. Article 45 TFEU only regulates the free movement of workers as a subcategory of the free movement of persons. It concerns only employed persons with regard to employment, remuneration and other working conditions. Employees have the right to live and work in any member state. With the establishment of the European single market, self-employed persons may also work in any country. This is the freedom of, of establishment. See lecture Introduction to International Company Law, Part 3. No citizens of the Union may be discriminated against on the grounds of nationality. That's the prohibition of discrimination. Freedom of movement of goods. The free exchange of goods within the states of the European Union is guaranteed within the framework of the freedom of movement of goods. The aim here is to improve and expand the range of products on our markets by opening up national markets and even to make scarce goods cheaper. To this end, it prohibits the member states from certain practices that disadvantage, disadvantage trade with goods from other member states. That means that have protectionist effects. These include customs duties, import and export restrictions and measures that have a comparable effect. 
The freedom of movement of goods is regulated uh, by Articles 28 to 37 TF EU. According to Article 28 TF EU, the European Union shall comprise a customs union. This is composed of two elements, the prohibition of the levying of customs, duties and comparable charges, and the introduction of a common custom tariff vis-à-vis -vis non member states. Article 30 TFEU prohibits member states from imposing custom duties among themselves on the import and export of goods. This prohibition covers all financial charges levied unilaterally because a good crosses a border, thereby increasing the price of a good because it crosses the border. Also prohibited is the levying of charges that have a similar effect to customs duties. This is the case if the levy causes a foreign good to be more expensive than a domestic good. The levying of such a charge cannot be justified, which is why its existence always constitutes a violation of Article 30 TFEU and therefore is unlawful. Article According to Article 31 TFEU, the Union shall establish a common customs tariff, which shall apply to countries which are not member states of the Union. The member states may therefore not set tariffs independently. This is done by the Council of the European Union. Article 34 TFEU promotes the internal market by prohibiting all measures that impede the free movement of goods between member states. In distinction to the, to the prohibition of customs duties, Article 34 TFEU covers non-tariff barriers to trade. It prohibits discrimination against foreign goods compared to domestic goods. From a legal system pers perspective, the fundamental freedom is thus a right of equality. Article 34 TFEU lists several sovereign measures that may constitute an impermissible restriction on fundamental freedoms, quantitative restrictions on the import and export of goods, and measures having equivalent effect. Article 34 promotes equal treatment of member states in trade and the removal of barriers to trade. In jurisprudence, this is referred to as negative European integration. As a norm of international law, Article 34 TFEU creates obligations exclusively between member states. However, according to the case law of the European Court of Justice, this norm also creates an obligation of each member state towards its citizens. Accordingly, Article 34 TFEU contains a subjective public right that allows the citizens to take legal actions against the violation of Article 34 TFEU by a sovereign authority. The European Court of Justice also sees in Article 34 TFEU a duty of the member states to protect the free movement of goods. From this follows the obligation for member states to ensure that their markets permit the free movement of goods. In this respect, the fundamental freedom is comparable to a fundamental right of the basic law, the German constitution. Article 35 TFEU prohibits quantitative export bans as well as measures having equivalent effect. A difference to Article 34 TFEU arises with regard to the interpretation of the term measures having equivalent effect. The European Court of Justice determines its content on the basis of the so-called Dazonville formula, but considers only those measures that are specifically limited to the export of goods to be covered. Otherwise, almost any norm relating to production or distribution of goods would fall under Article 35 TFEU.
the freedom of movement of service or the freedom to provide service. The freedom to provide service allows providers of industrial, commercial, craft and freelance activities free access to the services markets of all member states of the European Union. It is regulated in Article 56 to 62 TFEU. Nationals of a member state may invoke the freedom to provide services under the following conditions. The nationals are established in a member state and are allowed to provide the service there. Secondly, the service has a cross-border element, which is the case in three situations. The service is offered in another member state, that's the active freedom of, to provide service. The recipient on, of the service comes from another member state, passive freedom to provide service, and only the service crosses the border, corresponding freedom to provide service. More so, the national must be self-employed. That's the difference to the freedom of movement for employees. And we need to have a generally demanded remuneration. In, in contrast to the free movement of goods, no goods may be delivered, but a service must be provided. In contrast to the freedom of establishment, the EU citizen does not, does not establish his own branch in the other member state and is not integrated into the national economy there. If the provider makes use of the freedom to provide service, he leaves his establishment in the original member state and only moves temporarily to the other member state. In principle, without prejudice of the, to the freedom to provide service, the provider must take into account the conditions that the member state to which he moves prescribes for the exercise of the service for its own nationals, unless the services are liberalized by EU directives or EU regulations in accordance with Article 59 of the TFEU. Freedom of capital movements and payments. Article 63 TFEU regulates the free movement of capital and payments. Capital movements are understood to be the unimpeded transfer of money and goods for investment and investment purposes. The intention of this regulation is the future creation of a single European financial area. This free movement of the capital in the EU enables all natural and legal persons resident in the European Union to make financial investments, acquire real estate or hold interests in the companies in all other member states of the European Union. I hope you enjoyed this um, very short overview over the European Union, its legal sources and institutions, and see you next time.